Greetings and welcome to the channel. Today's video is all about casters, specifically the heavy duty kind like these that you find on most rollaway tool chests. You're probably familiar with casters already because you've fought the wobbly ones on shopping carts. And that's what happens when a caster stops castering. So how does a caster work? The contact point of the wheel, which causes drag, is behind the pivot point of its bearing. And as long as that point of drag is behind the pivot point of the bearing, it'll try to keep itself aligned in the direction that you're rolling. That same concept is used on everything from the front wheels of your car uh, to the front wheel of a motorcycle and even the front tire of an airplane. A shopping cart has four casters, so you can move it sideways, forward and backward, and even spin it around in a circle. But why do tool chest manufacturers usually only put two casters on one end of the tool chest and fixed wheels that don't turn on the other? That makes it very much like a car, and that makes your tool chest about as easy to maneuver around as trying to parallel park a Hummer. Now there really is a reason that they do it that way, and I'll explain it later, and it might affect your decision on whether or not you want to do this process that I'm going to describe in this video. But in my case, I wanted all four wheels to be casters, and that's because I have a small workshop, I have limited room to maneuver in, and having a tool chest that I can spin around and move back and forth and side to side like a shopping cart would be a real advantage. I've put four new casters on my tool chest and now it spins like a ballerina and I'm really glad I did it. The best part is all four casters total price was under $30 on Amazon. If you do decide to go through with this project I suggest you do it sooner than later. On the sites that sell casters for industrial use a similar set of these would be at least $80. This set I found on Amazon is extremely low priced and I just don't think those prices are going to last forever. It's a simple project that can be accomplished with uh, just a couple of tools. So if it sounds interesting to you, let's get to it. Before we get started, I want to mention that this is just the first in a series of videos I'm going to do on the restoration of an old craftsman tool chest that I bought for $100. By the time we're done with this, it's going to be better than new, both in looks and performance. Be sure to look for more videos in this series, it's going to be a fun project. So here we go with another unboxing video, but at least this time it's not from Rock Auto. I was a little nervous because the package was kind of beat up when it got here, but then I realized that these casters inside can't take a little shipping mishandling, and they're certainly not going to be able to support the weight of the tool chest. So, I wasn't too worried. But it turned out there's a box within the box anyway, and the inner box wasn't damaged at all. Uh, yes, it's made in China, but uh, the purpose of these videos is to help you do projects as cheaply as possible and it's going to be kind of hard to find a domestic product at these prices. Quality is fine, the bearings are good, everything about this looks like it's capable of doing the job very well, so I'm quite pleased. The actual conversion process is pretty simple. Uh, right here I'm pulling out some metal shards that were stuck in some of the wheels so I don't stab myself with them later. All you need for the Craftsman tool chest is a common screwdriver, otherwise known as a flathead screwdriver, to pull out the four screws that attach it to the bottom of the chest. Here I'm test fitting the new caster just to make sure that the whole pattern aligns and they do the holes of the new caster align with the uh, old holes in the cabinet but the new caster bumps into the lip that's on the bottom of the tool chest what i'm going to do uh, to take care of that is just uh, put in some washers between the mounting plate of the caster and the bottom of the chest now even though the hole pattern aligns, the hole sizes are not the same, so I'm going to have to enlarge the holes in the cabinet to 3 8 inch. And I'm going to do that with my good old trusty Harbor Freight half inch hammer drill. 
the reason I'm having to use that drill is because I tried it with a uh, cordless drill and the steel on the bottom of this cabinet is so hard it was making my cordless drill stall. As you can see the hammer drill has no trouble at all. Once you've drilled the holes I recommend that you deburr them on the inside of the chest and then uh, test fit your new caster like I am here inserting the bolt with the three washers used as spacers can be a little fussy but uh, have a little patience and you'll get it done now I've got two of the bolts in and I'm testing the caster to make sure it rotates completely all we need to do then is drill all the rest of the holes and bolt the rest of the casters on and we're done with the job checking again for full rotating clearance and here's the payoff look what this thing can do now this is going to be a huge asset for moving this tool chest around in my very small workshop. Back at the beginning of this video, I did say there was a potential downside to this modification, and it has to do with geometry and the center of gravity of a fully loaded tall tool chest like this one. As you can see from these drawings, there is a change in the footprint uh, meaning the dimensions between the wheel centers from the previous arrangement to the new one with the uh, four casters. As you can see in the uh, left hand and center illustrations, we've actually gained an inch of footprint between wheel centers from the old system to the new one, and that would imply that the whole tool chest assembly would be more stable with the new casters and in that direction it is. What's different however as shown in the right hand illustration is that we can now move this tool chest directly forwards and backwards across its narrow dimension. If you apply a strong pulling force at the location of the yellow arrow and get this thing moving at a pretty good speed then you might have an issue if you cross some kind of uh, obstruction like a, uh, an expansion joint and a concrete floor or perhaps a hangar rail if you're working on airplanes and since there is only five and a half inches between the front wheel center and the center of gravity it's uh, got a good potential of tipping over but only if you're moving it quickly and applying a strong force one solution would be to apply your pulling force down uh, closer to the bottom instead of up near the top but since there isn't a handle down there that could be a little awkward i am working on a solution to that though that i'm going to show you in a later video in the meantime just move this tool chest carefully and make sure that you don't get it going too fast and you shouldn't have any problems Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And if you could take a minute to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. See you in the next video.